Well, you was all attracted in by that ridiculous title, wasn't you? Uh, let's be honest. Um, but this is no laughing matter, to be perfectly honest. Um, and what Reading Football Club would do for Ricky Gervais to become chairman and Carl Pilkington to become CEO, let's be honest. Um, Dai Yong Pang, um, who has been probably the worst ever CEO you could find, um, has, you know, ran the club terribly. He's been going over the head of Mark Bowen, who is the director of football at Reading, um, and just making his own decisions. And it kind of really... It, it, it just kind of devalues Mark Bowen's position. He might as well not be in that position. You know, not that he doesn't deserve to be, because he is a good director of football, but because Dayong Pang is just a complete and utter joke. Um, so why am I making another football video about Reading Football Club? Well, the main reason being is that, you know, it's critical timing um, for the Royals. And the main reason being is that the club needs significant funding to even get through the month of March. I've covered this off with a number of people. I had Dr. Mike Gow on here. Um, I had Andy Preston. I had Nick Holton from Sell Before We Die and Star. Um, and, you know, this is my hometown club that we're talking about here. You know, now, I know a lot of you probably be watching this and thinking, well, Reading, it doesn't matter to me. But when you think about it, you know, even if you support a rival of Reading, like Oxford or Swindon, or even if you're a Bournemouth fan that don't like Reading, you've got to think, you want to see rivals survive. You want to see clubs survive because it could easily be your club next and that is really why you know i got behind derby county and i've got behind every single club that's been in this situation but of course this club does mean a little bit more to me because it was the club i grew up with as a kid there's no i'm not i'm not going to sugarcoat the story because everybody knows it you know i grew up as a kid i moved down in 2008 started watching my local club and do you know what never did we imagine that Bournemouth would be in the position that we're in but we are and we're lucky Reading have had probably the polar opposite where they were a very well-run club of a, under John Dayski of course they had problems beforehand they had the situation with Robert Maxwell where he was going to try and merge them into Thames Valley Royals, um, effectively, what would have been, you know, an MK Dons, Milton Keynes Dons, it's horrible to say it still, situation. But let me read you this statement, because this is a statement that no football fan wants to hear for their club. No football fan should wish on another football club. It is horrible. It's desperate. And luckily, it's getting passed over from Jamie Carragher to Gary Neville to Jeff Stelling. Um, people are, you know, taking action, sharing this. Um, but this is the sell before we die update, and it is desperate. Shortfalls, supporters, and saving the club. After the latest meeting with Nigel Howe, so Nigel Howe is bought in. He was once the director under Don Medeski, Sir John Medeski. Um, you know, he's been bought in to help oversee the purchase. Starr shared a worrying update about the state of the club, including the presence of a shortfall in March's figures. Now, it goes on. What is a shortfall? A shortfall occurs due to inadequate funds in comparison to the financial obligations or liabilities due for payment. In other words, there is not enough money to pay for everything at the club. Shortfalls 
equal points deductions, and Reading have had too many of them, and um, we'll come on to the EFL because they're an absolute disgrace. An absolute disgrace. Uh, temporary shortfalls happen frequently in business, but are never something that a company would choose to deal with. They are objectively bad. It means scrambling to secure additional funding making operational cuts and arranging new payment terms with creditors. And in football, there is an added blow of sporting sanctions. Shortfalls are punished by points deductions. If we do not have enough money for HMRC, we lose points. If we do not have enough money to pay the staff, we lose points. If shortfalls persist, we lose points. Put bluntly, this shortfall could relegate us. And when you think about it, Reading Football Club, a side who, you know, back in the era when I moved down to Bournemouth, were a Premier League football club, playing in what you can easily say is a Premier League football stadium with a now Premier League training ground. We'll come on to that as well in a bit. Shortfalls and the sale. We believe staying in League One is absolutely essential to our prospects of a sale. But we also think it is what our players, manager, staff and fans deserve. We are more attractive to potential investors in League One. This group of players are fighting to keep us there. And it would be heartbreaking if a points deduction relegated us again. So let's fight to try and avoid them. What can we do to help get money into the club fast, as in this month, as in now? The most effective way of getting money into the club is to come to home games, buy a ticket, persuade a few others to join and come and get behind this team. This revenue goes quickly and directly to the club and your support will lift the players on the pitch. Can you bring the in-laws? If you've not been for a while, now is the time to come back. If you can't attend the game yourself, could you buy a ticket for someone else? Once you're at the stadium, come to the fan zone. Spending money there supports the club as well as the quality local breweries, burgers and burritos. Is that it? What more could we do? The club is reluctant to ask fans to fundraise. After all, we have already fundraised for the club by buying season tickets and merchandise. And from a moral standpoint, fans, especially when money is so tight, should not be asked to subsidise a billionaire's bills. Again, we'll come on to that. We have seen that fans do not share this reluctance. We have seen that fans do want to go the extra mile to save the club and are willing to use their own money to do so. Dai Yong may have given up on Reading, but we never will. It says Star will lead the charge on any fan-led fundraising, but grassroots fundraising and bucket collections are not going to be enough. We're going to need corporate help, creative sponsorships and high net worth individuals to pull off this great escape. If you believe you can help facilitate any of the above, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us or STAR. Until then, the way to do your bit is to buy tickets and turn up to save the club. It's pretty damning. Um, that you know my hometown club the club that i grew up you know my dad supports my granddad supports my brother's support um is in a crisis mode it's crisis mode I, I can't even spit my words out because it's horrible to think it's it's just it's just horrible to think you know that this could well be the case um and let's let's get the villain of the piece out the way this message goes straight to Dai Yong 
And if this man who is quite clearly, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to hold back. This man who is quite clearly a tosser is, you know, has got no affection for anything. He's already killed two football clubs, you know, two football clubs that were supported in his home country of China, in Belgium. You know, if he's got an ounce of decency, he would sell that club, realise that he's made a shit job of it and walk away. and Just walk. Just walk. You know, he probably won't because he is still a tosser. But, you know, he would probably sell cheap and give the club's fans their football club back. You know, a training ground. He's... And we'll come on to that, actually, because this pair of tossers, Dai Yong and Pang, and let me give everybody who is, you know, unaware what Pang is. Pang had a Twitter account a little while back um, that Sell Before We Die actually found, and some of the weirdest stuff was actually liked, retweeted on there. Um, you know, the, the guy is, I'm going to be, again, I'm not going to hold back. The guy is actually a village idiot. And to be honest, Sutton needs its village idiot back. You know, Sutton United don't want him. But, you know, Sutton need their village idiot back because the guy has quite clearly lost the plot um he's now and this this is what this is what's phenomenal now these two idiots are trying to now sell a training ground which is fairly new they put that up for sale on its own now let me just give some background on this as well because i've done some research that training ground was actually a golf course beforehand so it's not going to be a golf course again. Could a rugby co- club, you know, move in there? No. It's in the middle of absolutely nowhere. It's not really land you could build on. So, to be honest, Reading Football Club have actually done a clever thing by taking over this plot of land that, you know, is probably not really... <laughs> It's not really worth anything apart from a football club. And they've done a very, very good job of it. It's a new complex. Who would buy it? I am sorry, but who would buy that? It smacks of desperation. It smacks of absolute desperation. And in all honesty, you know, nobody's going to come in for it because nobody can build anything on it. It's too expensive to run. You know, it is something that has to come combined with the football club, very much like the football stadium does. But of course, Dai Yong has also asset stripped that as well, because this is what he does is he asset strips things. That's how he killed off the other two clubs. He asset strips them and, you know, sells off a bit over here, sells off a bit over there. The guy is a fucking crackpot because at the end of the day, what he should realise is if he wants to actually get a decent amount of money, he should put the stadium and the training ground all into one and sell it as one because it is all one football club. You can't have a fo- sell a football club without a stadium. And, you know, he's asking for rent. Oh, yes, he can, you know, allow the club to actually lease the stadium back till 2043. Fuck off. It's the football club stadium in the first place. So effectively, you know, he's flogged it to himself to then lease back to the football club. Honestly, it just, it's just bizarre. It's actually just bizarre what all this is. It's just fucking bizarre. Um, So, yeah, at the end of the day, that, cannot happen you know it's it's ridiculous so to be honest the reading fans if you've if you've not realized and you've not had a look into it the reading fans have got quite a good sense of humor 
And what I mean by that is that they're not taking this as doomsday scenario, which it could well be. They're actually taking it as a, well, you know, we'll see what we can do with this. You know, that's what they're, um, you know, they're, they're looking at all eventualities. You know, how do they fundraise? What can they do? I know the title is very jokey about Ricky Gervais and Carl Pilkington and, you know, but who's to say, you know, somebody like that wouldn't invest, you know, in a football club who, which I understand that Ricky Gervais is a Reading fan. You know, you've got Chris Tarrant, you've got other people as well there. So, you know, that all makes sense. But what doesn't make sense is this, you know, asset stripping this football club, you know, to actually try and, you know, put in, you know, put in money, Dayong. At the end of the day, you're the one that has completely fucked it up. So why don't you put some money in and do what the right thing is? You know, the the club, like I say, are reluctant to ask the fans. The club's staff is on a skeleton staff because of, you know, the shit this man has put people through. Hopefully once this is all over and there's a proper owner in place then then you know those people can come back because it is you know firstly one of the oldest football clubs in the country it's also got you know a state-of-the-art training ground it's got state-of-the-art stadium it's got everything going for it and surely just surely you know This football club can be saved from the abyss. You know, Derby was saved, you know, and to be honest, they're both fairly similar sized clubs. You know, Derby's probably historically been a lot more successful, but at the same time, you know, Reading have been, you know, outstanding, you know, on their academy, the players they've produced, you know, throughout the years. They've been, you know, you look, have a look at any Premier League squad. And, you know, there's the likes of Michael Elise, uh, Gabriel Osho, um, even going back, Gilfie Sigurdsson, players like that, you know, who have been very, very successful and come through the academy. So, you know, there is that to take into account. Um, So whoever buys it are getting, you know, a good deal. But this man has got a stranglehold over its throat. Um, this Dai Yong. And the EFL, right, let's talk about the EFL. Because the EFL are a complete and utter joke. And I'll tell you why they're a complete and utter joke. Here we go. So Rick Parry said some time ago that, you know, it's no point finding the owner. The owner's not going to pay the fines. You know, it's really down to him. Um, Now, Reading, of course, got a points deduction very recently. So you're saying it's down to the owner, but you're still penalising the fans. This is what I don't understand. I don't understand it about minus 17. I don't understand it about any of these points deductions. I don't understand it about the Everton situation. You know, it is mistakes made at boardroom level. Now, if those mistakes are made at boardroom level, you know, then if there is a sporting advantage, I can understand Manchester City, for example, with 115 charges. But because your owner's complete and utter toss pot and decides that he doesn't want to invest any more into a football club, that's not a sporting advantage. Because your owner's not going to pay a tax bill, that's not a sporting advantage. Because the owner can't get his money out of China, well, so he says, that's not a sporting advantage. You know, to be honest, the EFL have told him what he needs to do and transfer X amount into another fund. 
So I'm not fully blaming the EFL because Dai Yong should be doing that well in advance. He knows what the score is. He should be following that. But he doesn't give a shit. Let's be fair. He doesn't give a shit. So the whole point of this video is, firstly, to hopefully drive this man out of Reading Football Club. Like I say, you know, I know it's a Bournemouth channel. I know people are going to go, oh, it's a Bournemouth channel. I'm originally from the town. I'm passionate about the football club, you know, as I am with Bournemouth. You know, there is no two ways about it. There's no two ways about it. But at the same time, this needs to be sorted ASAP. The EFL cannot keep charging a football club, you know, and making it more difficult for the, them to sell it. Because at the end of the day, you know, the club means a lot to the fans. They don't give a fuck about the fans, the EFL. They never gave a fuck about Bournemouth fans all those years ago. And they didn't give a fuck about Luton fans all those years ago when they put them on minus 30 points. I, I'm sorry, but it's a disgrace. And really what the EFL should be doing, and I've mentioned it before, is having a golden share or an independent regulator should be having a golden share where they can take, you know, the clubs off these crackpots. You know, where they can take the clubs, you know, off the people that are running them. Now, I'm not saying, but, you know, Bournemouth back in the day, minus 17. Yes, it wasn't particularly well ran. Um, however, it was more of a monetary situation. That was a difference. This bloke supposedly does have money, but does he? You know, if you watch the interview I did with Dr. Mike Gow, um, and it's really, really interesting. It's a long watch, but it's very, very interesting. Um, and it also goes in, because Mike is a Everton fan, it goes into their plight as well. Um, and, you know, I do feel sorry for the Everton fans as well. And, you know, the crisis that is at Goodison Park at the moment, um, which probably pales into insignificance when you compare it to the Reading situation. But at the same time, it could easily become this. That's what it could be. Um, so personally, you know, the EFL, the Premier League, there needs to be an independent regulator now. Not in a moment, now. You know, the shortfalls, you know, the fans should not have to be raising the money for a billionaire who is sat on his ass in China, lapping it up, whilst this pang bloke, who is an absolute clown, like I say, Cole Pilkington would be a hundred times better than pang, because, you know, and I know it's a, it's a comedy show. But if you watch an idiot abroad, you know, he's made out to not be the most intelligent people. But I tell you what, he's got, you know, he's got miles more on Pang. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, this will be resolved. If this video does, you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, drum up more support, it's done its job. If it does continue, getting money into Reading Football Club, it's done its job. It might be on a Bournemouth channel, but I don't care. What I want is the money to be drummed up. I want as much, you know, opportunity for the football club to be sold. And, you know, once it is, then hopefully a very br much brighter future than what Reading are looking at. The other option and I've said this before, is administration. And this might be the way out. Of course, there is one particular party which is understood to be sniffing around the football club still. And it sounds as if that might be what that party is waiting for. You know, I can't speculate, but that is, you know, what it sounds like. Now, if that is, you've got to ask the question, is administration, which would probably relegate Reading, unless, 
unless the EFL, you know, determine that, you know, it would be unfair to deduct any more points, which would be changing the rules. But at the same time, there has to be questions of how they've even handled this. Let's be honest, this man got rejected by whole city to take over them. And then the EFL, you know, only a matter of months later, approved them. So Rick Parry, to be honest, should resign over this. Rick Parry should resign. He's an absolute embarrassment to football. The EFL are an embarrassment to football. They don't care about fans. They just care about their own coffers. But at the end of the day, if, you know, this video does the trick and, you know, drums up the support and, you know, the club is saved, brighter future, you know, the administration question, you know, I think you've got to look at it. If administration happens... Reading could well be relegated, you know, according to the rules, they probably will be, because I think the points deduction at that point, unless the side who have been fighting valiantly managed to pull them out of it, you know, I think it probably will relegate them. Is Reading in League Two better than Reading stuck in League One, but going through this turmoil again next season? Is it better to have that fresh start from a lower level rather than die holding on, causing hassle, more points deductions, which will eventually result in relegation? Let us know your thoughts. Let us know your thoughts. And like I say, you know, it is a Bournemouth channel, but at the end of the day, you know, Reading Football Club was the side that I grew up with and I want to do everything I can to actually help, you know, friends, to be honest. You know, I've got a lot of friends, um, you know, who are Reading fans. It's not just family. Um, and hopefully, you know, close this chapter and allow Reading to look at a brighter future. Because that's what a football club deserves. You know, every football club's fans deserve that. It doesn't matter how big or small you are. You know, every football club's fans don't deserve to lose their football club. You know, and like I've said it before, like the Manic Street Preacher said, if you tolerate this, maybe your club might be next. I've said that a couple of times. Nobody should be tolerating this. Everybody should be, be behind and whatever can be done should be done. That's enough from me. Thank you again for listening. Um, no doubt we will be covering off this in more detail, maybe with some more special guests. We shall see. But I'm not going to keep, I'm not going to stop banging the drum. I'm not going to, you know, keep quiet about this. Um, and, you know, until the football club is sold, until Reading Football Club is sold, expect a lot more videos like this. Um, and I've got to thank, you know, all the Bournemouth fans who have been very, very nice and accepting about, you know, my history and also nice about, you know, the situation that Reading have found themselves in. I've got to thank them. And um, plus, Lots of other fans as well. Um, so, yeah, make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, Brennan fans, because I know it's a Bournemouth channel, but, you know, whatever I can do, and if any of you want to come on here, just drop me a line. Um, you're more than welcome. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, Dai Yong's days are numbered and Reading Football Club will be back with the people that do matter, which of course is the fan base. Thanks for joining us again.